So 6A and 6B are actually the same laws. The only difference is the entry level person, I need his boss's permission to do it as, as well. Other than that, 6A and 6B are the same thing. Have you ever had a situation like either broker or sales associate? Yes. I've got three non-resident agents right now. I've got one that lives in North Carolina. Uh, there's one that moved to Vegas. She did not get a Vegas license. Remember I told you we were talking, thinking about opening our license in Vegas because mm -hmm. when she moved out there, we were going to do that until all the problems of me getting my license. So she decided to not get a license, but she still has her Indiana license. So she'll come home and actually close properties in Indiana. So yeah, I've, I've got this several different times. You will see this happen also, and the reason I used Florida as an example, because you get a lot of snowbirds, people that are you know 60 and 65 that have retired, and they spend half the year in Florida, and they will broker in Florida under a Florida broker, and then the other half of the year they spend in Indiana, they will broker under an Indiana license and an Indiana broker. So it's actually very common. Okay. If you are convicted of a crime, you must send that complaint with the final disposition to the commission within 30 days. So if you get in trouble after you've got your license, you still have to tell the commission, hey, I got in trouble, so that they could potentially determine if whatever you did wrong in the real world may also cause you to suffer some penalty in the real estate world. Now, here's the funny thing. I've seen this happen. A young lady got arrested for a DUI, didn't turn it into the commission. She was, the commission dinged her for not reporting it, but didn't ding her for the DUI. So if she just would have reported it, she wouldn't have been had any issue. The fact she failed to tell the commission she got arrested was a violation in and of itself. All right. How did the commission find out she got the DUI? She eventually told them, but she was late. That's a good point, Shawnee. You bring up a really good point. There are people all the time that come to me and say, hey, example, Tony, the guy that got a, that was five years in prison. While he was in prison, he told me that he had gained religion and it was now a youth pastor. And when I told him that the Indiana does not do a background check on you, which believe it or not, that is true. Indiana doesn't do a background check. So whatever you write is what you write. If you write, I've never been arrested, they're not gonna do a background check. But Tony said, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna go ahead and write it down. And my stance to that is you should write it down or report it because here's what's gonna happen. Suppose you don't tell them and then all of a sudden you get really good and famous and big and you're making a whole bunch of money and you get somebody that gets jealous and they know you got arrested. And all of a sudden they go to the commission and go, hey, I think LaShawna got arrested about three years ago. Did she turn that in? And all of a sudden they go, well, no, let's call her in and talk to her. Now they ding you for that. And this good income that you have now spent three years building may go away. So um, I always tell somebody, just report it. First of all, we're gonna talk about this. No matter what you do in the real world, you cannot get in trouble in the commission world without a hearing. All right. You could get arrested for freebasing kittens. It doesn't matter. That's my favorite joke in the whole class. And it goes a lot of right over a lot of people's heads. The fact is, you got arrested doesn't mean 
your license is suspended. They actually have to have a hearing for you. So go ahead and report to the commission and see what they say. Because if it doesn't have a direct bearing on the trust of the public or endangering the public, they may go, yeah, we really don't care. You know, you got caught for indecent exposure. That may not have a direct bearing on your license. You got caught for murder, you potentially, but they don't automatically take it away. You have to have a hearing, okay? All right. Managing brokers, managing brokers. We are not allowed to use the school as a hunting ground for new agents while, it, while you're on the premises. Now, some of you reported that you wanted your name disseminated, or I may have called you outside of school. If I did, I probably said, hi, this is Raymond Modulin of the Modulin Group to let you know that I was calling outside. I am not allowed to have people come in here and recruit while in class. That also includes you guys. If one of you are already going to like Keller Williams, I am not allowed to let you talk to the other people about, hey, I'm going to Keller Williams, they're really great, you ought to call them. I would have to say, hey, stop, you can't do that. Because this is a recruitment-free zone while in class. Now, you said I want your name disseminated. I put your name out there. There are brokers on our list that may have called you and said, hey, I know you're going through class. Do you want to come and have a meeting? That's okay. It's during the course that you cannot get solicited. I am responsible for all the actions of my brokers. You get in trouble, I'm going to get in trouble. If I maintain two or more offices, I have to have a list of which agents are assigned to which office and who's the managing broker or who's the branch manager over there. As the managing broker, I can be a branch manager of the office I sit in. We currently have three offices. I'm a branch manager, even though I'm the managing broker. Matt has an office and Jennifer has an office. And in Jennifer's office, there's like Lynn Benson, um, there was Joel, and they have a list at the commission that says the Real Estate Monkey LLC has three addresses. The managing broker is Raymond Modulin, and he's the branch manager for the, this office, and Matt Jones is for this office, and Jennifer Weberg's for this office, so we have to tell them. Partnerships, corporations, they may only act as a managing broker, not as a broker. That's what I just told you. You guys can't get one of those licenses while you're underneath me as a managing broker. Now, number 3B is very important to understand because we're going to touch on this in a minute. Each corporate license, and I mean a corporation, an LLC, or a partnership, will designate an individual to be responsible for them. So what I'm telling you is this, this entire class, I have been telling you that I'm the managing broker for the Modulin Group. I have been lying to you. And you know how you can tell when I'm lying, right? My lips are moving. All right, technically, under the eyes of the law, my LLC is the managing broker. The Real Estate Monkey LLC holds the managing broker license, and that LLC has designated Raymond, who is licensed, to be the responsible party for them. 
because the LLC cannot walk and talk and sign documents and do all of that. It appointed Raymond to be that. So technically under the eyes of the law, my LLC license is the managing broker. It is a artificial person who cannot die, hint, hint, you'll see coming up. And I have been named as the individual. So I get to walk and talk and act like it. And I sign all the documents, but I sign all the documents as Real Estate Monkey LLC by Raymond Modulin member. That's how I sign my listings because the LLC is the true manager. Hold that thought. There's a reason for that you're going to see here in a minute. A managing broker has to be a resident of Indiana. I cannot be the managing broker of a company in Hawaii. I don't live there. A non-resident can be a managing broker as long as they have an indi a non-resident individual broker's license or they are the managing broker for that corporation or partnership that does not reside in Indiana. So like a company in Louisville that wants to practice across the river here in Indianapolis or in, in the Jeffersonville. All right, are you seeing the white screen or is it black? It's white. Okay, With the you're actually seeing the screen with text and all of that. Yes. All right, cool. My mirror of what you guys are seeing is showing a blank screen that's completely dark. So I just wanna make sure we're all seeing the same thing here. I have a question. Certainly. So, under your LLC, you are the man managing broker, but you, so does that mean you can go live in Las Vegas and then still be able to sign documents and managing your office here in Indiana under your LLC? No, because the LLC would have to appoint a person that could fill their spot. And they can't appoint you because you're already the managing broker? All right. I am not the managing broker. I'm lost. I thought you had to be the managing broker in order to obtain an LLC. No, what I said was the LLC cannot hold a broker's license. I said okay. they can hold a managing broker's license, which okay. is what they do. Okay, I got them twisted. All right. And then they, the LLC appoints an individual to represent them in the business. Let me give you the, I'll give you a short story and we'll see it here in just a minute. If I die tomorrow, does the Modulin Group go away? Why? You said no, but why? Because then it'll be the next um, managing broker that will be put in place to handle the affair. Well, you're very close, except you said one word I don't like. It wouldn't Probably. be the next managing, the, the company's the managing broker. It would be the next individual broker that they appoint to take over. If I die in a car wreck, did the legal managing broker die? No, because it's a corporation. Ian, it would all of a sudden go, okay, Raymond can't do it. Name Ian and he's going to step up and now he will be the acting managing broker. Because if I died, what happens to all of my listings? Remember one of the seven things that kill agency is what? death is it fair to my 37 listings that their listing goes away because i was out playing volleyball and fell and broke my neck no 
So the state forces me to get a corporation or an LLC or a partnership, which names me to act for it. So if I die, the corporation, which all of these listings I just told you signed with Real Estate Monkey LLC, don't go away. Because the corporation, which is the true managing broker under the eyes of the law, did not die. Raymond died, but he was only the guy appointed to talk for them. We'll just now appoint a new guy. Lashana's it now. So now Lashana gets to walk and talk and act like the managing broker when it's really the real estate monkey LLC so that when you die, you pass it on to someone else and none of the listings go away. None of the commissions go away. None of the earnest money gets tied up because the managing broker under the eyes of the law did not die. Only the person they appointed to act for them died. 